So um, to Theo's point about the fact that this project does not automatically tri trigger the $75 million threshold, a part of the reason why we developed the CBO trainings at Detroit People's Platform is because more and more we saw that especially after the Community Benefits Ordinance was passed in Detroit, that too many projects were coming in just below the threshold by coincidence, right? And, <laughs> and so when these projects don't meet the threshold, oftentimes community misses out on opportunity to really get um, what it means from these developers to create equity. So we've created a few tools in order to assess how these projects are showing up and whether or not they are extracting or adding to community. And so one of the tools that we do that through is the zoning equity tool that we talked about earlier, but the other one is a racial equity tool that we've developed. So next slide. So what is racial equity? So um, this is the definition that I wrote about racial equity. It's very long, um, but the short of it is, it is um, the intentional uh, development of policies or the management of public resources that ensures that racial and ethnic groups that are vulnerable in community have an opportunity to um, have equitable outcomes. Um, why is it important? Uh, simply put, to mitigate harm in vulnerable neighborhoods. Next slide. So um, this is just a snapshot from the very end of our racial equity tool. As you, if you can see all the categories here, we assess um, projects for racial equity based on a number of indicators, which include pu public subsidy, which is public tax dollars or public resources the project receives, um, housing equity, so whether or not they're um, providing equitable housing for folks in community, equitable employment, um, equitable environmental standards, uh, transportation equity, food and retail access equity, health access equity, and then there's cultural preservation. Um, and so just to briefly go over um, the areas where this project fared very well and where they didn't fare so well, um, first starting with where they did well, we saw in transportation and in food and retail access and generally in health access, this project did really well. So transportation assesses um, the accessibility of the project. And we have heard this developer say they're gonna repair all of the sidewalks. They are located next to a number of bus stops and transportation, public transportation options that surround the project. And for that reason, we gave them their credit, right? They're gonna show up and, and they're gonna be located in and around a space where if the average person in the community has a job here, they can get there very easily. They have accessibility to sidewalks and those things are critical. Um, and essentially the same things around food, retail access, and health access. This facility is generally located in an area that provides access to amenities. If you think about a single mom who catches the bus to work. If you're a single mom catching the bus to work and the grocery store is way the other way on your bus route, chances are you're going to stop and get your kids McDonald's or a more unhealthy food option, right? So it's about thinking about how development shows up in community that creates pathways that are sustainable for the families they employ. Um, and so in, in terms of areas where the project didn't do so well, public subsidy won, of course, uh, because this project is eligible for um, over a million dollars in public subsidies if anyone got it, they take advantage of. In addition to that, um, uh, there was uh, no housing with this project, so we did not assess it, so that's why you see an X. Um, in terms of employment equity, so you see they got a three out of 15, and I bet a lot of you are wondering, how? They said they're gonna you know, give 150 construction jobs, three to 400 full-time jobs. Well, again, we have to remember that simply because someone says that the jobs are gonna come, we don't see any guarantees for Detroiters for those jobs. There's no guarantees that we're gonna be employed. There are also no guarantees yet in terms of salaries. I know council members said that they're still working these things out behind the scenes, but we scored these projects with uh, District 7 residents in our CBO trainings and at the time, that information was not available. So the scoring is based off of what they've given us here, now, and today. And here, now, and today, all we've heard is that we're gonna get three to 400 jobs, but there have been no guarantees in terms of who they're gonna employ, long-term reporting about who they employ, and how much they're paying, you know, Detroiters versus the non-Detroiters they employ, and all those things. So, um, unfortunately, this project only scored a three out of 15 in terms of employment equity. And another area they scored relatively low, which is incredibly important, and I heard a few people mention this during the Q&A with Eagle earlier, this project has made uh, no significant strides with regard to environmental equity outside of doing the brownfield work, the site testing work that's gonna be required for them to get their brownfield tax dollars. This developer has not committed at all to doing any long-term assessments, analytics, or tests about how this facility is gonna impact your air quality, your groundwater quality, and your long-term quality of life. 
Again, when we're thinking about the impact of like the Chrysler facility on the east side, the Amazon facility at State Fair, we hear a ton of residents complain about the truck traffic, about how the ground is shaking so much it's impacting the foundation of my home. And these are the sort of things that we don't see assessed um, with this project or even intended to be assessed just yet. So the project scored very well. And so overall, um, that 49 actually should be a 32 out of 105 is where this project scores. And so um, that equated to being an inequitable or an unjust project. And so I know for a lot of people that probably is like a little bit jarring. Um, for some of you in this room to hear that it's inequitable or unjust, especially when we're thinking about the fact that this project is going to be redeveloping a dilapidated site. It's going to take away an eyesore out of the community. It's going to create so many jobs. But again, we have to remember, what are we trading off for those things? And we have to remember that we have power to demand more. Just because this project is scoring low doesn't mean it has to stay there. This is an opportunity for us to look at this low score and ask the developer to Achieve higher, right? Because it's it's just not that hard, especially with the resources these developers have at their disposal. Next.